perfect world, those who are best at their job with the relevant experience and qualifications, that's you, get the job. Unfortunately, we do not live in that perfect world. Those who are incompetent, friends with the boss, or that interviewer just liked them can end up with the great jobs that you deserve. What did they do that you didn't do? They were able to build a relationship instantly have trust and convey competence. They did this using some simple, dare I say, tricks that you can easily incorporate into your routine. Make sure you stick around until the end when we discuss the one strategy that is mind-boggling, easy to implement, yet many miss it completely. Tip number one, remember that first impressions are critical. Smile when you go in, make eye contact, and give them a firm handshake. Not a limp one, not a bone crushing one, but keep in mind the etiquette on uh, handshakes has changed a little bit in the last few years. Only give them a handshake if the other person initi initiates the handshake. Some people, as you're probably well aware, prefer not to, given all the trouble we had with COVID. So follow their lead. And don't forget, during the interview, smile at the person. Uh, again, without going overboard. You don't want to you know, be smiling like an idiot, but you do want to look like you're uh, enjoying yourself, having a good time, most importantly, enjoying the conversation with the interviewer. Tip number two, stay relaxed and engaged. Avoid fidgeting, um, etc. You want to look at the person that you're speaking to, not anything else in the room. So if you're looking at the, if the interviewer is sitting right opposite you, you want to look at them. Don't be looking at what they have on the wall, the plant, um, the food on their desk, whatever it is, just stay engaged with the interviewer. And of course, sit upright and don't slouch. Tip number three, storytelling. Um, develop some real life examples of things that you've done that you can incorporate into some of the questions that you're going to be asked. Um, and I like to call these short stories. And notice I said short, don't ramble. Don't include extraneous details that have nothing to do with the matter at hand because you don't want to lose their attention and you don't want them to go away with thinking, oh my, this one will never shut up. Tip number four, say the interviewer's name several times throughout the interview. And this is another one. Don't overdo it. Just do it judiciously. Um, uh, because if you overdo it, you're going to come across creepy, creepy as a creep. You know, it's, it's not good. So you can do something like when answering the question, you can say, well, John, or well, Jane, but not with every question, just maybe two or three times during the interview. And if you have the opportunity, especially if it's the hiring manager, the person that you're going to be, or the person you're going to be reporting directly to, ask them something about themselves. Okay. Okay. Try not to do all the talking yourself. Tip number five, this is called mirroring or echoing. And only do this if you're comfortable and don't be obvious about it. What do I mean? You want to mirror the hiring manager's posture, their gestures, their body language, their vocal pitch, if you can, and tone uh, by reflecting their uh, by reflecting their behavior and similarities, you will establish a bond. Um, this approach puts the interviewer at ease, it promotes trust, and people feel relaxed with other people who are like them. So, for example, let me give you an example. If the interviewer claps their hands like I'm doing now, um, don't do it right away, uh, but wait 30 seconds or a minute and then clasp your hand. If they cross their legs um, and you're comfortable doing that, you might cross your legs also. But don't do it. 100% of the time because then it, 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 it comes, of course, again, as creepy. Tip number six, commonality. If you have something in common with the interviewer, highlight that. If you've both had a, 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 an annoying boss, you want to comment on that a little bit. You, you want to be careful with that. But if you both have an interest in, you know, I don't know, like I'm a New York Mets fan and occasionally I actually do find somebody who's a New York Mets fan, you can talk about that a little bit. But again, you don't want it to take over the um, interview. All these tips, I'm sure you realize, just a little bit, not overdo it. Uh, tip number seven, a little flattery goes a long way, but you have to be careful here because you don't want to say anything that could be deemed inappropriate. Um, but if you can find a way to integrate a compliment into, into your interview once or twice, that should go a long way. So let me give you an example of what you might do. Um, if the interviewer tells you how they handled a particular problem, 
problem um, and you believe that was the right way, don't do this if you don't think it was the right way, um, you might say something, that was brilliant, but don't go overboard and only do it a few times. But if you can find a way to integrate a compliment, that is going to go a long way to getting the person to like you. It shouldn't, but this is the world we live in. Tip number eight, you want to demonstrate confidence without being, without being arrogant. And it's a fine line there. Now, people typically go one of two ways. They can be very self uh, depreciating and they come across as being, you know, not confident at all. And who wants to hire somebody who has no confidence is going to let other people walk all over them or they can come across arrogant. And that's really bad because nobody wants a know-it-all in their operation. So then you're, you know, you're less likely to uh, get the job. Um, tip number nine, you want to uh, practice active listening. And so what this means is when the other person is talking, you want to listen to what they're saying and not be going on in your mind about what you're going to say next, which it, it's a common practice. I know it. I probably am guilty of it also, but you want to listen to what they're saying so you can say something meaningful in return. You want to maintain eye contact. So uh, continually look them, you know, in the eye, but not, you know, not, not again, not in a creepy way. And you want to ask thoughtful questions. And if you don't like, like know what to ask, we've got a number of videos on this channel, which you can go back and um, listen to that will give you some hints on questions that you can ask and you can prepare them in advance. So listen to what they're saying. Um, it's it's okay to say when, when they ask you something, um, you know, that's a really good question. Let me think about it for a minute. But if you're going to do that, only do it once or twice. Again, it will come across ludicrous if you say that every single time they ask you a question. And again, ask thoughtful questions. And when you ask a question and they answer it, um, that might be the opportunity for you to weave in your, your compliment. Tip number 10, and I don't know why everybody doesn't do this, but prepare, prepare for the uncomfortable questions, the uncomfortable questions that you know you're going to be asked. So if there's a gap on your resume, be ready to explain it. You want to have a succinct, a short, succinct answer for any of these annoying questions that they're likely to ask you. And you want to be careful with these answers because the answers want to be thoughtful. They want to address it, but you don't want to continually be putting, you know, blame on someone else. So I had a terrible boss. Uh, he was a tyrant. She was a tyrant uh, because all those things have a way of reflecting poorly back on you. So these uncomfortable questions, the gap in your resume, whatever it is, you took a salary cut, although you shouldn't be discussing salary. That's a whole nother issue. Um, whatever it is, prepare an answer um, that's believable and, um, and then try and move on. Okay. So um, you also want to have answers for those annoying questions. I call them annoying um, that people always ask in interviews, you know, like what is your great uh, greatest weakness, etc. cetera. Um, why do you want to leave your current position to help you with this? We've got a video that addresses many of these questions and provides you with some answers that you can use. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.